Hi guys and welcome to this video called The Language of Research. This video is really going to help you when you are analysing and annotating your articles for the research project. So the terms that you're going to learn about today are bias, reliability, validity and credibility. It's really important that you understand them so that you can apply them correctly to your own work. So bias, this is when only one side of a discussion or an issue is presented. So this can be in terms of primary or secondary resources. It can be in things like media articles. Um, it can also be, you can also have biased data from something like a survey or a piece of research. Alrighty, so there are different ways that this can be done. I have a person with a tie on the right here because I think a really easy way to look at this is in terms of um, politicians. Quite often a politician will talk about how they are in support of a particular person or of a particular issue and sometimes they will write a speech or an article for a newspaper about how they support a particular person or an issue. Um, quite often, so I've got the example here saying I support Mr Oil, a very relevant issue, um, the oil industry. Try and think about well, does that politician maybe um, have something to, I guess, do they have something to gain from that article? Perhaps they themselves have a stake in the oil industry or they know that the oil industry brings in a lot of money and so if they were to go into power, they, they need that money. Um, so I guess that's there just as a bit of a reminder or something to look back on. But I guess the different kinds here are something like intentional bias, which is what I just talked about. You've got someone who has a particular stake or something to gain from representing or presenting a biased piece of work. Um, and so they purposefully avoid something like maybe environmental issues in an article. They completely avoid the other side of the argument and just present their view. This can also be exaggerated. So if you've got Mr. Oil talking here, um, he might be saying things. He might be saying things that really exaggerate the profits of the oil industry or how many jobs they're worth to Australians. He'll really try and over-exaggerate all the benefits of it. Okay. Now, omission. This is a really tricky thing to look for because essentially you're looking for something that's not there. So have a think when you're looking at your articles or your research. What views aren't presented? or what, person, what person's views aren't presented. So perhaps in Mr Oyle's article, he hasn't mentioned anything about environmental issues. He also, hasn't, um, he also hasn't mentioned anything else relevant to the topic that might make you think differently about his issue. Um, I've got biased sample down the bottom as well because I know a lot of you are doing surveys and interviews. And I'd like you to think about the fact that sometimes samples of data can be biased. Um, for example, if this Mr. Oil is writing his article and he wants to, he wants to include in that article something about what the population of Australia really thinks about the oil issue. Say, for example, he does a survey, but he only asks oil workers or people who work in the industry. Well, of course, they're going to say that the oil industry is great because that's how they earn their money. Okay, so also make sure you're looking at samples when you talk about bias. Now I've got some tricks here about how to detect bias. So always try to think about the person who is writing or producing your particular source. Do they have something to gain? Do they have something to lose? Um, maybe what have they invested their money in? What is their particular job? Do they stand to gain in terms of that way? Um, who stands to gain? So again, maybe a particular company or a political party. Um, maybe you're talking about injury prevention and you read an article by a physiotherapist who says, you know, in terms of whenever you get an injury, you have to go see a physio. Well, do they stand to gain? Of course they do. They're going to get more business. Okay. Um, second to last, do they have supporting evidence? So this is really important. They need to have facts and statistics and evidence. Perhaps they have um, lots of different sources that corroborate what they're saying. And always think about is more than one side of an issue presented. Okay. All right, let's move to reliability. This is a consistency of results. So um, a good way to look at this is when measuring weight. Quite often when you go to a carnival or um, 
a particular event, you have someone there where you give them $2 and they guess your weight. Um, you know, if they guess it right, you lose. If they guess it wrong, perhaps you get some kind of price. Think about you go to see a guesser one day and he might say that you weigh 70 kilos. And then you go and visit him again the next week and he doesn't remember you and again he's guessing and he says, I think you weigh 60 kilos. You go and see him again a few weeks later and he says, I think you weigh 75 kilos. He's not reliable because he's not getting consistent um, measures of your weight. Compare that to something like your scales that you have in the bathroom. Every time you step on those scales, they're going to give an, a consistent result. Okay, even within the same day or even the same space of time that you're measuring your weight, you could get on and off and on and off the scales. It's going to give you that same measure, so it's reliable. The same applies to your research and it applies in the following ways. So if you're doing primary or if you're looking at primary sources, something like a survey or an interview, would you get the same results with a similar sample at a different time. So if you repeated your survey or your interview a week later, would you get the same responses? Um, a good way to ensure reliability as well is to repeat things. So if you can see that um, a survey or an interview process has been repeated several times, that data is likely to be reliable. Now, in terms of ensuring reliability for secondary sources, um, is the article or the data that you're looking at, is it consistent with other articles or data? All right. Does it, is it all similar? Are they all saying kind of the same thing? Also think about how credible your source is. If you're not sure about that word, we'll be visiting it a bit later. But um, is your source just Joe Blow from down the road? Or is he perhaps he or she an expert in your topic? All right, validity. Now this commonly gets confused with reliability, but it's very different. So this is about, is uh, your source accurate? And is it related to your topic? And ideally, is it measuring what it is designed or supposed to measure? Okay. So again, let's revisit that weight example, except this time you're using scales that are 70 years old. Grandma passed them down um, and you keep them in your bathroom, except within the same day you get on and at one stage it says you're 60, another stage says 65, another stage says 70, and you know that you can't possibly have changed that much within the day. You've got broken scales. So essentially, even though it's designed to measure um, weight, it's incorrectly measuring that. So it's not a valid um, response. Okay. Now, in terms of ensuring validity for primary resources, um, so for a survey or interviews, are you asking the right questions? If you want to know about people's opinions of um, the school, are you asking them about um, what do you think of Brighton? Well, Brighton could mean the suburb and you're going to get very different answers. So make sure you're asking really specific questions and that they're relevant to your topic. Okay. Also make sure you've controlled variables. So if you're investigating one particular thing, Try to keep everything else constant. So if you're asking people about Brighton School, the school, maybe you wouldn't ask people what they think of the school at the start of the year and perhaps what they think of the school at sports day and then perhaps what they think of the school during exam week because you're going to get very different responses based on how people are feeling at the time. All right, in terms of ensuring validity for secondary sources, you need to think about, okay, does your source relate to the topic? Are they talking about something kind of related but not really? Um, you also want to be careful of generalizations. If you read something that says Brighton Secondary is an exemplary school, you couldn't then try and generalize that to Brighton is an exemplary suburb. Okay. So be really careful about whether people generalize things um, and try and investigate things that they're saying. Also, credibility of source comes into this one as well. Think about who is the author or the researcher involved in what you're looking at. Are they an expert? All right, credibility. So this is where you're essentially verifying your source. Can they be trusted? Can they be believed? So make sure you're using credible sources. Now, um, if something is credible, it offers a unique perspective. So you're getting something from perhaps an expert, 
someone who specialises in the area. Um, what they're saying is corroborated or supported by other people. Um, are they maybe contradicted by others? If you read one article that disagrees with everything else that you've found, perhaps consider is that article credible? Have a look at the author. Um, in terms of the author, you might like to look at are they qualified? Who are they employed by? What is their experience in that particular topic? So, a summary of what you learned today. We talked about bias, where only one side of an issue is presented. Reliability, which is looking at the consistency of your measures um, or sources. The third is validity, so that's to do with accuracy. Is it measuring what it's designed to measure? Is it relevant? And credibility, so this is whether you have a trustworthy source or not. So if you're not too sure of these terms, maybe go back and re-watch the video and by all means ask one of your teachers if you need a hand. If not, I'll see you in class, guys. Bye.